Uh, is this working? Hi. Right. Well, thank you so much for everyone for coming. Um, we are going to be discussing the biographies of two of the most like remarkable Indian politicians ever, Mayavati and Yogi Adityanath. So without wasting any time, I will ask Ajoy the first question, which is, um, you know, what according to you are the building blocks of political biography? You know, when I started writing the biography of Mayavati, a lot of people warned me, and this was, mind you, in 2008, uh, and she had just come to power. She had got a clear majority for the first time in UP, and that was very unique in UP, because we've had many coalition governments in UP, uh, and for a long time, nobody had got a majority. A lot of people felt that I should not write a biography of Mayavati, uh, because I would not be able to do a proper job uh, and that either I would be too harsh or to be too pro. And one of the things about uh, a political biography is that you need a certain distance actually between yourself and the subject because, you know, politicians as they are, they don't like biographies, they like publicity brochures. They like what they call hagiographies. And I remember one of her closest advisors who helped me write the book, Shashank Shekhar Singh, who was her principal secretary and who was very, very important in her government, warned me that please, for God's sake, don't tell her you're writing a book on her because she's going to sit on all of our heads and ask us not to speak to you and just the, she'd want to uh, really have you write uh, everything positive. And I really took his advice, so I very, very quietly, because I knew Mayavati from before. Actually, her mentor, Kanchiram, uh, I knew very well, because I was one of the first journalists he befriended in the early 80s. Uh, and uh, so that was one thing which I was certain that I did not want to get into a situation where the politician concerned started dictating my copy. Uh, uh, because for an independent journalist, it was very important that even though I wrote a very sympathetic biography, and I thought it was a fabulous thing that uh, a Dalit school teacher uh, from a fairly obscure background had risen so far that she could become the chief minister of India's most populous state, but I was very, very clear that I did not want to only talk about her good points, but also her bad points, so I could have an entire chapter on corruption. And also, let me tell you, that the trickiest paragraph I have written in my 45-year-old career in journalism is the one in the book where I describe Mayavati's relationship with Kanchiram. Uh, and it was a really tough chapter, a tough paragraph to write because I wanted to convey the sense that they did have a romantic relationship. And often this was a very turbulent relationship without at all being salacious because I very quickly also pointed out that it was her political relationship with Kanchiram which was the important one and not the personal relationship. But I could do all this because I kept a distance from myself and my subject. The other thing about a biography, a political biography, is that often we get carried away by the personality. And although the personality is important, I think the politics is more important. And I think that Mayavati represented for me several things. Apart from her very interesting personal story, there was this question of her crafting the BSP, which was a very unique type of party, which was totally different from any other political party. And that was a very interesting subject to investigate. Secondly, it was the Dalits and politics. And Dalits as a community were very, very important. And I wanted to bring that down and political empowerment of Dalits from Ambedkar onwards. And finally, the Uttar Pradesh politics. And I think that that's very important because when you're writing a book on a political leader, it's not enough to write about just her or just her party, 
but also so in uttar pradesh when i'm writing about mayawati i'm also writing about samajwadi party i'm writing about the bjp in my latest book which is title bhenji the rise and fall of mayawati which traces her rise but also her decline because she has been losing consistently for the past many years and i think as her biographer it is for me to also trace a fall right i really find that that is a very very important thing thanks ajoy shantanu the same question to you i mean how would you describe your approach to writing the biography of yogi adityanath uh <clears throat> good afternoon to the lovely audience at jlf uh so snigda i think first thing when you write a biography of a live party live means not living but who is like current and he's the chief minister one thing that you face daily that people will consider you and if it's a positive biography as if you are his uh, uh so to say you have to defend him for everything so on a daily activities and at times i'm i'm not even aware that time news channel calls me that yesterday he did this what about this so i said i i'm not even aware so so you have to defend that politician whatever is doing uh, every day that that's one second thing accessing a politician something who is a chief minister is very difficult so uh, during writing which i spent around 3 3 3 and a half months i was able to access him for like 6 7 times uh, for uh, by access you mean that you had like you direct interviews yeah, with him the, talking to him because by the time he was already chief minister and because he was a chief minister like uh, it was a uh, he just started so he was busy in forming teams um, uh, appointing as officers so there is a second thing but as ajoy said i think one so this advantage is that uh, through biographies you can convey lot of other poli- uh, contemporary political things that's happening otherwise uh, so with the face of yogi i can sell this book easily but if i write about 2017 elections up election which i have written a whole chapter on maybe they'll they'll be not uh, uh, such a response so with with the uh, yogi i was able to write about the ram mandir movement about what all happened in up in last 20 years lot of interaction between uh, uh, samajwadi party bsp and bjp so you can write lot of contemporary politics uh, with the life of a political leader like like yogi so yeah, i think these are the couple of things as i want to thanks shantri as i want to come back to the subject of mayawati in media you know you said that you you deliberately did not seek access to mayawati but it is also I mean one of the most common things that is um said of Mayawati is that she just does not like interacting with the media and a lot of time that is seen as um you know her aloofness her absolutely her absolute imperiousness in her like um general approach to the media but what I, what uh, many people do not know and what you describe in um your book is the background for her relationship with media i mean I, rem- i i remember there are sections in the book that describe the way that danik bhaskar um started to malign her as early as in um the late 90s about her relationship with kanchiram and later even like um years after the the, the new same newspaper would um uh, carry a headline calling uh, mayawati a chamarin so i want you to talk about i want you to talk about that you know it was amazing because uh, when i started uh, covering the bsp and then later researching my book uh, the sheer visceral hatred of mayawati which i encountered among so many members of the media um it's really funny because it's not so anymore because i think she's seen as somebody who's lost out and who's losing and it's so easily supported because she's no longer seen as a winner but when she was on the ascendant i think there were people who really hated her and there was naked caste prejudice uh, and people really wrote all kinds of things about her her press conferences used to be so hostile and that's not just mayawati but kanchiram mayawati by her personality is a very shy kind of person she's not at all a public person so she would uh, i think rather stay away from the media but a mentor kanchiram was just the opposite he loved the media in the sense that he loved engaging with the media he loved arguing with the media and you know it often came to nearly blows i remember uh, a particular instance when uh, the media had gone to kanchiram's house and uh, 
they didn't want to discuss the bsp movement or the dalit movement all they wanted to know was that which women's underclothing which was hanging out in the lawn who did it belong to i mean i was astounded you know at the kind of personal type of attack uh, which was launched and even uh, i remember after my book the bsp refused to send any spokespeople on television and although mind you i was quite critical of parts of mayawati's personality or parts of what the bsp was doing i ended up in defending her on behalf of the bsp on several programs and many people felt that you know i was representing the bsp although i had no intention of at all doing it but many of the attacks uh, were very unfair thank you ajay um a related question shantanu you take this unique approach in the book um on the subject of politicians and uh, media coverage i mean you you dedicate several pages in the book to um defending yogi adityanath against what you see as um a negative manufactured uh, malicious attempts to um project him in a light that he does not deserve i mean wh- why that decision i remember there's a part in the book where and you go bit by bit i mean attacking every line in um every book written about him a particular pieces lifted from um everywhere picked from everywhere indian express hindustan times you name it but and then there's a whole part on uh, international media's coverage of yogi adityanath in which you take uh, the strongest objection to new york times headline from when the time yes from the time uh, yogi adityanath was chosen as chief minister and um the headline called him militant um then, then she changed the headline to fire brand the headline but describe why it mattered to you i mean i i can imagine why it mattered to yogi adityanath why did you um dedi- oh. why do you dedicate yeah. so much um, so attention so uh, snigda i was writing this biography even before he uh, became the chief minister uh, but during elections i brought my other hindi book uttar pradesh vikas ki pradeksha mein so i was a little busy uh, so when on 19th of march he became uh, took the oath as a cm it was like blazing in this guys that now i was like i have to write it now uh, and when i did my secondary research i read so some 300 400 articles available on him some 200 youtube videos and they were like not even 99% there were 100% apart from his own uh, interviews they're all 100% negative uh, commentary on him uh and when i went to the field so i did like uh three three ways on the field so i went to uttarakhand i spent around 15 days in uttarakhand uh met his father mother all all his siblings he went to some six he went to six schools and two colleges i went to all the colleges met teachers colleagues uh students wherever they living made some 100 phone calls to whatever number i got my hand on and then i spent around two weeks in gorakhpur met uh, stayed in the mart inside the mart saw how mart is mart is being conducted or the gorakhpur mart and i found this four things right and then i decided that i think that's uh, the image which is there available it's not exactly maybe a uh, b- 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 uh, lot of things i don't have any defense for and i think people should criticize uh, the way we want so i i found this four things which were never talked about in media uh and allow me a minute for this so first yogi is 44 years old right he's a young chief minister for some reason we gave him all the adjectives but never gave him the adjective of young chief minister for some reason 40 at 46 47 rahul gandhi is young and at 44 yogi adityanath is not young <laughs> maybe it's it's his saffron robe that that for some some reason is uh, disallowing us to look at it, that he's young that's one and very interestingly within this 44 years he's in parliament for around 18 19 years he's in and that to lok sabha he's not sneak through lok sabha he has won five lok sabha election with exponential with increasing election uh, electoral margins and when you see a a, a politician like a, a, a lok sabha member how you assess him you assess him uh, to my mind two ways one you see what's his parliamentary record saying see how he's conducting himself in the constituency because he was not not a minister and he won the election in 2004 2009 when bjp was not uh, not doing great so as a parliamentarian you can check him on number of questions asked his attendance private member bills debates so and if 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 i take a convenient comparison with rahul gandhi so rahul gandhi has zero questions he has 3 not 6 questions rahul gandhi participated in nine debates he he participated in 57 debates rahul gandhi presented zero private member bills uh yogi adityanath presented three private member bills right and this is happening in 2014 to th- 2017 yogi is asking more questions to his own government which rahul rahul gandhi should have done right 
lot of people tell me that this is a con convenient comparison that you are doing with Rahul Gandhi. So, uh, so I go ahead and do the national average. National average of all the MPs. Then again, national average of all the MPs is 197. Uh, uh, Yogi Adityanath is asking 306 questions. So all the all the counts are still double, right? So he's a very involved politician. Somehow those speeches never came out. There are only five electorally charged speeches will came out. Now. People may still ask me that, okay, what, what is he asking in the parliament? Is he asking make Ram Mandir, Universal Civil Code? So if you allow me, uh, because, so I went through all the questions, uh, the thanks to PRS website, they, they presented very nicely. So, yeah, 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 yeah. You have to give me just two, three minutes, so that will complete this argument. Uh, because that's the central argument of the book. So, uh, so I, I'm trying to read out what is he asking, these 306 questions that he's asking in 2014 to 2010. What are, what are the questions? He's asking about HDI, uh, conversation of initial folk art, merger of insurance company, startup India, solar energy, dual pump, schools for child labor, aviation policy, fertilizer, pesticides. But many of them so I'm trying to read in a breath. Electronic manufacturing, cyber espionage, NPAs, Krishna, Krishi Vigyan Kendra, condition of IAMs, IITs, Indo-US ties, Indo-Japan ties, MCI, BPL. So he's asking what a typical Shashi Tharoor will ask, right? For some reason, for some reason, I think for our hate for this color called Saffron, we have only typecasted like the two, three videos which are available during elections, right? Now, if you go to his constituency, uh, he's winning. So one, 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 uh, one thing is he's winning, right? But why is he winning? So he's conducting a Janta Darbar from last two decades. He, he sits with, he sit with people uh, for almost three hours a day, every day. Shantra, we'll, we'll, we'll come to that, we'll come to that. Right. I want to move the um, uh, discussion a little bit back to the craft of the biography. And um, the question is for you, Ajoy. Um, well, we, we all know how important uh, childhood and family and education are to the making of uh, a politician, to any public figure. And you, you know, to, to the extent that you could, you go back into her past. You tell us how her father's, um, you know, partial attitude towards um, her brothers affected her and how that kind of like shaped the gender consci consciousness for her. You, s you speak about how every time um, the family went to their village in UP, she became more and more aware of how you know, everyone around her saw her um, as something like a person made entirely of her caste, how she would be traveling in a bus and people will strike a conversation with her family and then they will they would, they would ask them which village they were from, and the moment that the name was out, they would ask her which area they was from, and then suddenly they would, they would shrink back, um, and you know, and then she would become extremely uncomfortable and conscious. I want to ask you if there's like any event that you've, um, you know, you, you heard about, you wrote about during the research that you think was kind of elemental or like definitive in making her what she is today. Yes, of course. I mean, I, uh, you know, Mayavati uh, starts very early, uh, being very conscious of uh, her uh, Dalit identity. Uh, and I think that uh, there is also a patriarchal narrative playing out here because her father, like most fathers, uh, you know, felt that her brothers had a better chance of education. And when you don't have money, you're at the bottom of the heap, uh, you have limited resources. And I don't think that he wanted uh, to educate her for, uh, you know, uh, as much as uh, his sons. But I think what is very interesting is her grandfather's role in this. And his grandfather uh, went to the Indian Army. And I think the Indian Army, uh, much like uh, Kanchiram's uh, background, Kanchiram's family also went to the Indian Army, Ambedkar's family went to the Indian Army. Over generations, the Indian Army uh, has been known to break down these caste barriers. And if the grandfather really supported Mayavati's ambition of being something more uh, than just uh, a Dalit girl, uh, which is sort of doubly sort of deprived because firstly you're a Dalit and secondly you're a girl. And I think that was this burning sort of ambition which has propelled Mayavati all along because I think that she uh, really has you know, apart from her Dalit consciousness, it's her sort of personal battle to be recognized, her personal battle to be successful, her personal battle to compete uh, and oust others, uh, which is a very important thing in competitive politics, uh, you know, much more than anything else. 
which really leads to, uh, you know, grander success. So yes, I certainly feel that, you know, it is a big thing from childhood onwards. You know, her family and the way she broke those shackles of being a Dalit girl. Thank you. Shantan, in contrast, your book goes very little into um, Ajay Bist's past. And I finished the book um, quite mystified about how this kid from what seems to me like a um, average middle class uh, religious Hindu family, uh, you know, decides to become um, at such a young age the, um, the mahant of the Gorakhpur Mat. Um, th there are some bits from his childhood that I found really fascinating and there are only, there are only so few but there's one um, there's one where uh, Shantani goes back to one of his schools and his teacher tells him about how um, Ajay Bish as, as a, as a schoolboy used to complain to his teachers about yes about uh, you know like the mischiefs of his fellow classmates if they were like smoking a cigarette for example and that moral policing and that was so telling and I kept thinking I mean is there anything else that you found in that vein that like uh, throws so some light on so the personality? Yeah, in fact, uh, Snigda, that's why the book is a lot of evil. So my book starts from he taking the oath of the CM, right? Which is like the ulta. I like CM, then parliamentarian, then monk and then Ajay Singh Bist. And I was not doing so, I was doing Ajay Bist and like normal biography from like birth to. But there was so little information, there's something so non-consequential to write and the chapter was so small. So I'd, I didn't want to start with like a eight page chapter and then go to a 50 page chapter. Uh, so as, as I told you, I went to all the schools and to, to your surprise, a lot of people got to know that that's Ajay's this yogi when I interviewed them. They're not even aware that, oh, so they said, oh, this Ajay, he's yogi, oh, is it? So a lot of, lot of their colleagues made them realize that, okay, he's that yogi, that remember that 10th class boy, 8th class boy, 7th class boy. So a lot of people didn't even remember that what to tell and who was he, like, because like, it's like, he, when he was in his school, like in 94, 90, 93, 94, even, even before. So first of all, there are not very many anecdotes came from the family. They did come because uh, uh, he, he uh. so what happened exactly? I still have not able to answer that why he became a monk. And, uh, uh, and the only answer uh, which comes in uh, uh, Abhedanath's biography, uh, uh, his guru, he said to Yogi, he told Yogi that you had to be here. Tumhe to yaha aana hi tha. Uh, there is no answer to this, right? Like he, they almost make a very, very spiritual connection that you one day you had to come, the, you had to come to the smart and you had to become the monk, right? So there is no reason. But whatever I able to trace, what are the three, four incidents happen? Like he is born and brought up in a very religious family, as you told, right? And as you know, Uttarakhand, it's called a Dev Bhumi Uttarakhand, even in a government ad. Uh, and the area is also known for a lot of freedom fighters. So he's like born and brought up listening to those religious stories, those uh, the stories of the freedom fighter. He uh, he also joined ABVP and very interesting story in college that he joined SFI for almost two, three days. Uh, SFI, the student wing. In fact, the Hindu did a very big story on my book that Yogi could have been a political left and they said the book could have been called the comrade who became a chief minister. Uh, so he almost joined SFI and then he realized that I think that's not his cup of tea. Then he moved to ABVP after two days of filling the form. So stint with ABVP, that's, that's his, uh, you can call his political education. And that time he got very fascinated with the Ram Mandir movement. He tr and I think a lot of people not even uh, Ram Mandir movement, we attached to uh, Ashok Singhalji. But Mahant Avedanath was head of all the Ram Mandir committees in the last 40, 50 years. Uh, so he met Avedanath a couple of times, uh, like a student, like I, because I, I, I look up to you, I, I, I look up to this movement and I want to meet you. And in those meetings, uh, Avednath developed a fondness for Yogi. And once he was, uh, the Mahant Avednath was uh, admitted in Ames, Delhi. And that time he told that, see, I am, seems to be in deathbed. And uh, there is a tradition in Gorakhnath Mat that you have, to ch you have to choose your disciple while you are alive. Uh, so he said, now you have to come. I think it's a kind of emotional blackmail. So Yogi replied, you, you get well. As soon as, as soon as you're back in the mat, I'll be there. And uh, it happened as soon as Avednath was back in the mat. Yogi was there without informing the parents. He said, Ki kuch padne ja raha hu, I'm doing a job. His parents only realized seeing a newspaper a newspaper that now they have a discipline uh, who was adjusting based and all of that. Yeah. 
So I think that's how it happens. Right, thank you. Um, Ajay, I want to talk about the contrast between the, the image that these politicians want to perpetuate of, of themselves and the image that you as a political bio, uh, biographer uh, constructs from um, your reporting and research. And as in the case of uh, Mayavati, I mean, there's, a, there's like a, fa a fascinating bit in the book where she is talking about her own childhood and the incident that she, um, she chooses to, to tell us is about this time um, you know, uh, when the family's uh, just walking around in the village and there's a wolf and everyone wants to um, run away, but she, she, she decides not to. She decides to like face off and to, to chase it away. And in the case of Aditya Nath, again, there's a, there's a I, th I think it's one of his friends who tells you the story of how once um, as a young ABVP Kalkata, he, he stood in front of a bus and stopped it with his, yes, with his arms outstretched and stopped it from moving until the bus stopped and took on board uh, a bunch of his female, female, female colleagues. So that shows how dedicated he was to the safety and security of women. So the question I want to ask is to what extent do you think you were able to, you know, sift image from uh, reality and to challenge the perceptions that, um, you know, the, your, your, your main character wanted um, told of herself. Oh, absolutely. I mean, um, you know, Mayavati uh, spoke about this wolf. It's an eerie similarity of Modi fighting the crocodiles. Uh, you yes. know, uh, I know the eerie similarity because after all, you realize what they're really saying, that they were very special uh, people uh, from the time they were children. Uh, and you can understand where they're coming from. Uh, but as a biographer, again, as I said, that unless you want to be a publicist or a hagiographer, uh, you, you, you need to be very, very careful about these things, about what people say about themselves or the kind of image they want to project about themselves. Because that's not your purpose, obviously. You're looking at what they are, you know, light and shade, good and bad, and you look at them, and obviously they have to ha be interesting people because otherwise you wouldn't write about them, right? So I think with Mayavati, uh, I faced uh, a very interesting dilemma about Mayavati's early days. And Mayavati had an autobiography which she wrote. And it's quite amazing actually to think that this autobiography, which was largely in Hindi, later they did English translations. And since Hindi is not my mother tongue, I had to really, but well, I read Hindi. So I went through this very assiduously for one reason. Not so much because what Mayavati wrote about herself, but about the fact that she kept every clipping about herself, every newspaper clipping, every little last detail. And it was a fantastic storehouse of information. So I could really trace those little, little meetings she held as, you know, as a very young uh, Dalit leader with pigtails, you know, uh, you know the, and how she acquired her name, Benji, in the old days when she used to go on a cycle, uh, you know, and so, so you know, you, you have to have that ability to look at the kind of raw material you have, particularly of the early days of a leader when they're not really written very much about. And of course, you talk to all kinds of people, you know, and try and get and do what we call, you know, we journalists call cross-checking. We never have a single source story. You need to get more people, and that's how you build a portrait of a leader. Thank you. Shantanu, in your book, you deal extensively with um, criticism of Yogi Adityanath. You list nearly everything that the chief minister has um, ever been criticized for, whether it is his, um, you know, championing of um, you, uh, I'm not championing of love jihad, but of, um, of yes, of a movement against love jihad or, or, or um, uh, banning illegal uh, slaughterhouses to, you know, his making speeches such as, uh, you know, if they kill one Hindu, we will kill 100. And, you know, you, you dedicate paragraphs to, to, to confronting that. You, you try to show through uh, numbers and through anecdotes how it just you know, fell to him to do what he did. And that there is like a, there's a remarkable portion in the book where you say, uh, where in the portion about defending Mo uh, uh, Yogi's uh, move to ban slaughterhouses, you say he was so attached to, he was so attached to cows 
in, the, in his childhood that this personal indulgence you, um, it just seemed natural. And so I was wondering if you know, I mean, if you think that you seem a little bit enchanted with the figure of uh, Yogi Adityanath in the book, and I was wondering if you know, I mean, you think that people will see this as an you know as an attempt to whitewash his image. Uh, Smith, the first I'll compliment you that I think you have read the book in quite a detail and uh, because the book is almost five, six months old. So I'm like, as you're narrating, I'm, I'm remembering the instance. Thank you. So uh, I think my point was, I, I think I'll reiterate, when I read all those 300 foreign articles, I said, how can we, like, no article can be in favor of him. Like, he's a, he's a Lok Sabha MP, like, two, three, five lakh people are voting for him. Like, what can be so wrong with him that there is no positive article on him? There I think are so many positive articles on him, by the way. Now, yes, but not before. I'm a journalist, remember? Uh, maybe. I, I, uh, my, my research team didn't gi give me many. So, and, and when I saw all those facts, I'll, I'll quote you a couple of them. And then you realize that... Uh, uh, or, so, I'll just put the facts. Like, okay, this happened, this happened before this, and this happened after this. Then you make your own judgment. So, let's say on beef ban. So, let's say discuss one or two. Beef ban, love jihad. Uh, there's a beef van first. So when he came, he said, illegal slaughterhouses will be closed. Media called it a beef van. It's not. He said, illegal slaughterhouses, every slaughterhouse needs some five kind of permission from pollution board, from food board, from NCT. So there's a lot of licenses. So anyone who doesn't have those legitimate licenses cannot run. For some reason, there is a, there is a very famous Tunda kebab shop in Lucknow. It's like it's a cult shop, right? That shop was closed for some regular maintenance on during those days only. I mean, they said, oh, no beef is available and tunda kebab is going, no, no uh, meat is available and people are going out of uh, uh, business, right? But again, uh, uh, in UP, slaughter of, slaughtering of cows is banned from 1955 when Yogi was not even born. And the law is exactly the same till Akhilesh Yadav left the uh, government in 2017. So I just wanted to provide this information that he just said, okay, I'll close illegal slaughterhouses, uh, like uh, any illegal factory near Taj Mahal, which were closing for uh, many days. Uh, that's one. In fact, of all people, if you know, remember this uh, cricketer, Mohammed Kaif, he wrote a very interesting tweet and uh, became very controversial in favor of Yogi. He said, Tunde mile na mile, gunde na mile. We'll be happy to see no gunde in UP. All illegal stuff must be stopped. Good move. Welcome, Yogi. Uh, so I just want to provide this rational. Just uh, love jihad. People said, Yogi coined this come to love jihad, there's nothing of this sort is uh, uh, happening and it's, it's just out of no, uh, thin air. I, I'm sure all of you are aware what love jihad, love jihad is, right? I just provide the information that love jihad, he might have observed the same phenomena. I do, don't even know it's happening, not happening, that people can decide. I just gave the account that in magazine as, as uh, late as 2007, 2008, 2009, in UK, Canada, this phenomenon is mentioned by foreign authors. Congress and CPM Chief Minister V. S. Achyutan and Oman Chandi mentioned on the floor of the house that Love Jihad is happening. High Court of Kerala has taken an account of Love Jihad. Currently, there is a case of Dr. Akhila is going on in, uh, in Supreme Court. Catholic as associations in uh, Kerala has mentioned on Love Jihad. So for some reason, we never read all of them. As soon as Yogi said there's Love Jihad is happening in his area, he said, oh, Yogi, Yogi, he said Love Jihad. So that's the bogey I want to kill. That's why I mentioned all of that. I mean, I, this can go on forever, but I, I, I feel like every time you say media, I can say media, and for every, you know, for every like three articles that you can um, cite. Um, but I think uh, as it's a dominant article, right? It's a dominant article. But what like, is, do what is which dominant? Which is viewed by like an uh, article. You, you, this is an no, online. Like, you can in, in online you can view articles viewed by five people or five thousand people, yes, right? Yes, and and in, ter in, in in those terms alone, I challenge you that the uh, the you know the, the positive coverage of uh, Yogi Dittanath is uh, has more reach than the negative coverage of Yogi Dittanath. I doubt. I think the I think the first day uh, 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 about the international uh, media. I think up, uh, after Modi, Yogi must be the first CM who has covered so much international media. And and the heading was cow loving chief minister. We're talking about the reach. Those I mean. I'm saying they were talked about. I think you, no, you, Alan about, Berry's I mean, new, new New York Times articles that he is a militant chief minister was the most popular article. And she was trolled so much that she has to Most change the... popular by what measures? But anyway, I... It I, was talked about, like, we, it was in we should, debates. We should debate this separately. Um, I want to return to more uh, craft questions. Uh, Ajay, I want to ask you, uh, you know, about the political USP of Mayavati. Rereading the book for 10 years, nearly 10 years after you first, you wrote the first edition, it struck me so um, vividly that, uh, you know, one of the things that she does so, so well is this election management. I mean, a term that has only like come into uh, public discourse 
after the phenomenon of uh, Prashant Kishore and most, most recently Amit Shah and how he managed the UP election. But the um, amazing thing is that nearly everything that an Amit Shah or a Prashant Kishore is uh, credited for in either 2014 elections or the 2017 elections in UP, she did in 2007's elections from like cadre based um, mobilization to, you know, I mean, Excel sheets of like caste groups based on their political loyalties and frustrations and everything. So I want you to talk about that. But if there's any, anything else that, um, you know, stands out as a political BSP. Oh, absolutely. I think the BSP, uh, and I think that's a problem today, it was an advantage earlier, but the BSP is not so much a political party, but an electoral mobilization machinery. Uh, uh, the BSP uh, uh, does not agitate, it mobilizes. Uh, and this was, I think, Kanchiram's idea as well, but Mayavati perfected it and implemented it. And I think that a lot of people, Prashant Kishore himself admitted to me that he learned a lot from the BSP, and uh, Amit Shah, certainly, when he was watching this two thousand, I mean, one of the things which I write about is what Amit Shah did uh, in creating the Modi juggernaut uh, in 2012 after the BJP lost very badly. But they all learned from Mayavati uh, that, that you have to uh, mobilize uh, your co constituencies and have social alliances, uh, and you do this in terms of elections rather than any ideological construct. Uh, so I think that that's a, uh, that's a narrative which is very interesting. Unfortunately, what happens is, and what has happened to Mayavati today, and what may happen to Yogi Adityanath and the BJP later, uh, because you know, always have these cycles of going up and going down. And that is, you know, that is the law of politics. Uh, you know, uh, that something which goes up also goes down. But with Mayavati today, she's left with just the electoral mobilization machinery. She's no longer really can depend on a party. And that is why you have new organizations which appeal to Dalits more, 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 much more, like the Bhim Army and Chandrasekhar Azad. And we, we have to look at the ebb and flow of electoral politics when we are judging political personalities. Thank you. Um, Shantanu, you, you make the point in the book that we should not see Yogi Ditanath as a Hindu hardliner. That, sh that is not his political appeal. That's that one of his aspects, not the only aspect. But the, uh, the political aspect that you think that we should um, give more attention to is his um, you know, aspirational appeal um, for the youth voters. And I, you know, I, mean, I want you to explain why. So uh, in the initial response, when you cut, cut me short, I just uh, come to that point. So I was talking about four things, and I was able only only communicate two things. So first of all, he's young. He's 44 years old, right? He's extremely popular in social media, even before becoming the chief minister. He's a parliamentarian from the last 19 years, and I already told about the parliamentary record, right? Now, uh, uh, in his constituency, he's running Janta Darbar. So when Arvind Kejriwal or Akhilesh Yadav Janta, uh, runs a Janta, Janta Darbar as a chief minister, it's a talk of the town, right? He's running the Janta Darbar without being a chief minister. Last two decades, he uh, almost 100, 200, 300, uh, 300 people access him daily, and he solved their problem. And he did this in Mayavati regime and Mulayan Singh regime when he was not the chief minister. Now this Janta Darbar is running his chief minister office in Gorakhpur, both. And and what's happening in Janta Darbar? People are not asking for tender and petrol pump. People are asking for their pension, their scholarship, all of that, right? In fact, when I was when I was there uh, in one of the Janta Darbars when he was not the chief minister. One guy came with a letter, and he was a visibly Muslim guy with the skull cap and the beard. Uh, and he was very happy with this le holding letter in his hand. I'll say this in Hindi. He said, "Ye Baba ki jadu hi chitti hai, chahe Bhanji ki sarkar ho, ya Neta ji ki sarkar ho, DM kam karega hi karega." So it means that he's called Baba Yogi Baba in 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 in, in Gorakhpur. So he said, "It's a magical letter from Yogi Adityanath. Be it Bhanji means Mayawati's government or Neta ji means Malayan Singh Yadav's government. DM has to react on this letter. That's the clout and that's the connect of Yogi Adityanath." has uh, uh, in the area. And last point, before you cut me short, uh, we have, we have uh, just last, last, last point, just, just, just last point, right? Uh, and and people, pe people think that he's like one pujari who has become a uh, chief minister, right? So the book is called the monk who became so the, the monk, chief yeah, minister. The, so that sounds like the monk who has become the chief minister, right? So the, I'm telling the become part. Uh, so uh, the, 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 what I was telling, you, I'm making, you make, yeah, people think he's a some pujari, right? So the mud runs on 44 institution, which has almost a student intake of 50,000 students. That's an intake of Delhi University. And these, these, are not, these are not some Vedic institutes. There are Vedic institutions also. There are nursing institute, technical, uh, technical institute, polytechnic institutes. So he conducts them like a CEO. I was private to a lot of his uh, meetings while he became the CM. In one of the meetings, 
one minister asked that we should open more airports in UP. Because UP is such a big state, there are hardly three, four functioning airports. But for the next 10 minutes, Yogi Adhanath gave a download on, uh, on, on airports like which, which model of Boeing can go on which tarmac and what kind of air traffic control. All the IS officers were jaw dropped. They thought like this Pujari only know about Puja, but he knows his stuff very well. He is in many various parliamentary committees from last 19 years. His travel as government representative across the, across the world. Only thing, again, I say the same, our hate for the saffron robe, I think, made, made us realize that I think uh, he's, he, he's, he's nobody. Okay, I wonder who, who we is, but we, we will discuss that. That's the image in media. <laughs> uh, audience, questions. Okay, you. Over this past year, uh, journalism... Who is, who's your question to? Uh, to the panel in general. Uh, so, over this past year, journalism has gone from facts and evidence to more towards slander and defamation when it comes to political figures. Uh, most uh, evident example being the nation wants to know. So, what is your take on that? My uh, uh, one short answer is that I don't think that that is true. I think that the, a lot of journalism today deals with facts and figures. It is, it is partly, you know, the, the fault of the reading public who's more attracted to the slander and the, um, you know, the, op the opinions rather than the facts and the figures and the reporting. If I may jump in, it's not just slander and defamation, it's also overt psychophancy. I mean, honestly, in my 45-year-old career, I haven't seen journalists being so psychophantic towards leaders. And I mean, I'm, I'm really surprised at people being built up uh, you know, like this without cross-checking the facts. Uh, just, just, in fact, they say that news, news lies somewhere between NDTV and ZTV. <laughs> Truly. My question is to the panel in general. When you, whenever you're writing a uh, biography about a political person or any person, any influential person, how hard is it to keep your own beliefs, your own opinions and prejudices at bay and not let them influence your writing and keep it as neutral, as uh, um, uh, unbiased as possible? Shantanu. Uh, in my case, uh, Yogi Adana did not influence it. In fact, I was surprised he launched the cover of my book without even reading the book. He, I think none of his team was aware what I'm writing. Uh, uh, that's one. But again, you're right. There is a Stockholm Syndrome that when you write about it and you meet so many people. And I met a lot of Congress people also. And, but no one told me something very negative about him. He said, yeah, those available speeches which are uh, available anyways. But yeah. I do agree that this may happen. Okay, uh, I'm really sorry, but we somehow we ran out of time. And uh, yes, so, uh, well, I guess, I guess this is it. Thank you so much, Ajoy and Shantanu, and thank you all of you for coming. Thank you all for coming. A big thank you to Shantanu, Gupta, and Ajoy, both also to Snigda Poonam for moderating this session. Uh, the authors have confirmed they're happy to sign books. So given that we had to cut the questions short, I would suggest that if you would like to pose your questions, please go to the Full Circle Bookstore, pick up a copy of the books and take them to